Yes, good, okay. All right, so um, a new day, new century, and a new uh, co-author, Niklas Nilund, uh, who actually recently defended his PhD, so congratulations. Uh, Niklas will join us for the Q&A, uh, and I will be doing the presentation. Uh, and the idea is that because we have this unique format and uh, we actually presented this uh, topic a few times, so we don't want to repeat ourselves too much. I will just focus on the most important uh, points um, and then go to the newest findings. Uh, but you can catch up with everything uh, that is in the slides uh, on YouTube. So I think that's quite useful. Okay, so this study is a comparative study about two games uh, from 19th century, Huvi uh, Matka Avasaksa, which is the journey to Avasaksa, a town in Lapland, uh, where you can see the northern lights. Um, and the other Polish game, uh, game of geography of the uh, Polish kingdom. Uh, spoiler alert, there is no really like actual connection between the games. Uh, there are just uh, interesting uh, iterations of a popular genre of the era. Uh, so, a game of the goose, I don't think I have to go into the details with our audience. Uh, basic rules, each player in turn throws dice and places his marker on the space, bearing a number equal to the sum thrown. Um, there are, so basically it was a very popular game uh, in Europe, uh, especially in the 19th century, um, but there were also iterations uh, in, in, in the Western world in general. Uh, what is interesting for us uh, are especially games related to na nation building process. So for example, that game in the far are right uh, about the trip from New York to San Francisco, which speaks about uh, what is America in a way. So the comparison um, of uh, um, the comparison between uh, Finland and uh, Poland is actually quite uh, quite interesting at that uh, time period because both countries were, both nations were in the Western peripheries of um, the Russian Empire, but at the very different stages of the nation building, nation making process. Uh, so Finland at this point was an unestablished nation um, and Poland uh, actually lost its independence in the previous century. So it was in a, a de-established nation, if you will. Uh, we are looking here um, as, as a background uh, on nationalism studies, um, especially works of Genevieve Zubrzycki. Uh, she writes, national mythology in, is not only located in texts or oral locutions, but is uh, also embedded in visual images and material artifacts. So a study of nationalism in 19th century it's you know uh, quite quite common, uh, but not uh, study of ludic expressions, at least not that much. So we are interested in the material turn in nationalism studies. Um, again, uh, quoting Zubrzycki, the creation of national identity is not only located in political statements, legal texts, and official documents but also embedded in images and objects legitimized by institutions and enacted in practices. All right, uh, so now we will uh, do a close reading of, of, of both games, uh, starting with, with the Finnish game. Uh, the games were published in, in booklets uh, with rules and descriptions uh, of uh, each uh, of the spaces. Uh, then in the back of the booklet, you had this expendable actual board, a game board. Um, so the size of it is uh, something like that, more or less. Um, uh, so it neatly fit, it fits on, uh, on a table. Um, 
about the author. Uh, Hilda Olson, um, I think it's a very interesting character. Uh, we don't have time to get into details here, but she was quite a prolific game designer. Uh, we have listed here uh, games um, uh, archived by the Peli Musa, uh, Finnish Museum of Games, uh, but maybe there were more games. Um, so she moved to London where, fun fact, she was uh, designing tapestry. Um, because it's a Reiserspiel, a game about travel, we thought it would be interesting to use uh, Google Maps to actually recreate the travels. Like, does it, does it make sense? So in the picture here, that big shape um, in front is the actual uh, shape of Finland at that time. Um, and the, the map uh, below is, is Finland at the moment. So you can see that um, the game uh, traveled through, through Finland as it is today. However, uh, it excluded the western part um, where uh, Turku is, um, which was the old Swedish uh, capital, which is interesting from the uh, perspective of what is included and what is not included. Uh, another subject is uh, fascination uh, with, with the new. Uh, Niklas uh, was exploring the idea of board games in 19th century uh, being news media. So talking about a uh, new phenomena. Uh, so not only fascination with uh, technology, steamships or industrialization factories, uh, but also uh, food, uh, this, you know, novelty called coffee. Um, another aspect, uh, so the game, we start at the space one, which is uh, in uh, Suomenlinna Sea Fortress at the grave of uh, old, uh, well, connected to the, to the Swedish uh, history of Finland. And then we reach uh, space 56, uh, which uh, reflects the new, uh, new history of Finland connected to, to Russia. Um, the emergence of tourism. I think that is a very fascinating uh, take on, on, uh, on the analysis, uh, especially because Niklas was able to find actual um, talks about visiting Asaksa, um, um, short reviews in, in newspapers, if you will. Uh, so it was an attraction not only in Europe, but globally. Uh, there, there was uh, uh, this short news story about a visitor from South Africa in 1865, so around the time of the release of the game. Uh, from the nation-making perspective, of course, the shadow of the Finnish war is an important uh, theme, um, how it was presented. So in the space 41, uh, we are meeting a brave soldier. He lost one of his legs at the fight of Polion Virta. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, my Finnish isn't great yet. Um, so it's interesting, like the narrative, the narrative here. Again, with the nation making process, uh, how the game defines the other. Um, with the Omani people, for example, uh, it is very, again, uh, compassionate, um, but doesn't consider them really as, as part uh, of Finland. So minorities are excluded from nation building process. Um, and not our ethnicities get their own games, as Niklas points out. Uh, another more kind of visual uh, analysis possible uh, considers uh, what in future will be this kind of classic uh, representation of the Finnishness connected to the nature. Uh, and now for something that we decided to add on yesterday after listening to Suvik's talk. We thought about it before, but uh, thank you Suvik for your inspiration. Uh, so we were looking at what uh, is penalized and what is awarded within the rules system. Uh, 
If I was a modern journalist and um, reviewing this game, I would say the mechanics is uh, realistic, trying to represent the pr practicalities uh, of travel. So, for example, in the space 24, uh, you realize you lost your baggage, so you have to go back to space 19. Um, I also like the space 38, where you just go on adventure with, with, with a gypsies and end up in a very different location. Uh, in general, you know, we actually played those games, um, and the Finnish game felt really modern, and uh, it's, it's actually fun, fun to play even nowadays. Uh, it is a kind of feasible simulation of this sort of, of journey, at least at that time, using the means of transportation you, you had at the time. Um, and all the different areas included and beams are really interesting to, to, to uh, look closely at, to see what she had in mind, thinking about, you know, what is Finland. And now to the Polish game. Uh, again, booklet with a board. Uh, the author, uh, we don't have that many information. Uh, he was coming from a well-known uh, family in Warsaw of performers. Uh, he translated a lot of books from French to Polish uh, and created uh, two games, uh, of which uh, the one we are analyzing is, I would say, more interesting. So the actual journey, let's be honest, makes no sense. Again, in the forefront, you have uh, the map of the shape uh, how the Congress Poland looked at, at the moment. Uh, so it's a very convoluted journey and uh, I don't think the actual journey or travel was inspiration here. It was more about uh, showing the different locations. The only exception is like the first uh, several spaces, uh, which the way they are described in the booklet, it really feels like Szymanowski, you know, he lives in Warsaw, so he walks through the areas he knows well uh, and just, you know, gives you, gives you a tour of, of his city. Uh, so the Vims, recurring Vims, uh, uh, important in, 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 the, in the Polish game, and we have to remember that we are talking about uh, the established uh, nation is uh, the memory of the past, the history. So nation's uh, military heritage. Uh, for example, space 64, which is the winning space. We are, if you reach uh, 64 first, you win. Uh, I think it's quite interesting that it uh, represents the, the monument of uh, uh, Field Hetman Czarnecki, Czarnecki, who was a famous commander of Polish armies in the 17th century. And also it was he was used often by romantic artists as a symbol in, in patriotic painting, um, as you can see in the attached image. So uh, visions of the past glory, for example, uh, in the space 19, you visit the city of Galicia, the oldest city of Poland that uh, got destroyed, um, I think, in the 18th century by a fire. So here we have an image from, from the past. Another aspect is for whom the game was targeted. Uh, I would say mostly upper middle class kids, uh, and they could learn about folklore and how the peasants lived in different uh, regions. Um, this is a very kind of controversial and interesting aspect. Was the game pro -tsarist? So uh, when uh, Szymanowski writes about Krakowskie Przedmieście, which is one of the main streets in Warsaw, he writes, he writes about this controversial monument, um, in a way praising the supporters of the Tsar. But, we have to remember that the game uh, was censored, uh, and here I even translated for short, this short passage that is printed in the second page. So it's very hard to say if he was only trying to please the censor uh, to, to get published, or was there any different motivation. We can only really speculate. Uh, the role of Catholic religion and many of the locations presented in the Polish game uh, are churches, 
um, monasteries, uh, so places connected to Catholic religion. And it kind of uh, connects to the theme of uh, Poland being, being the so-called antemurale of Christianity, like the first um, defense line. Um, and now about uh, the rules system. So the Polish game uh, is less complex. You have certain bonuses, for example, if with the first throw of the dice, you get certain combinations, uh, you move ahead. Uh, and the uh, money back symbolizes that you have to pay extra. Because those were games that you played with with money. Usually, there was uh, that. That's that's how the rules suggest that you agree on a certain amount to be paid, um, and then the winner gets it all. Um, so the penalty spaces, uh, as you can see, they use the traditional um, game of the goose elements, which is the inn, a place where you stay for several rounds, or the so-called bridge, when you have to move ahead or back, and then the death space, uh, that, where you have to start from scratch. Um, and it's quite interesting that in, in two cases, you have to go back to the uh, space 31. Uh, and I would like to take a closer look at it. Uh, so this is like the, you know, the place that you, it's a bit unlucky in a way, right? So this is the description of, uh, of that city uh, in Szymanowski's uh, booklet. Uh, not much. Uh, I did uh, a bit of research, but you know, uh, those are like, like preliminary findings and I don't want to jump to any conclusions because it's very easy to, you know, say that there might be an anti-Semitic commentary here, but we have to discuss that with historians um, uh, working with Jewish history in Poland. Uh, at that time, uh, the city was 75%, um, 70% of population was Jewish, and there was a history of tensions uh, between Jewish uh, and Catholic communities. Uh, contextualization. Um, so uh, we managed to find some uh, actual reviews um, of, the, of the game. Um, um, one specific one, uh, less specific, I translated from, uh, the one from Konikai Ojinna. Um, so as you can see, not, not a lot has changed. Many kids consider educational games boring. No surprises there. Uh, but this um, uh, review to the left uh, is actually quoting how to buy a game that you order it by post. And in one of the archives um, I visited actually in January before COVID, I found the other game of Szymanowski in an envelope like this. So the actual package, because normally it, you, you find it uh, already um, in a new cover made by the library, but this was the original packaging. So I think it was basically uh, sent by a letter. Uh, we did some uh, statistical analysis looking at the different um, topics um, uh, that are kind of representing, uh, you know, the, the main focus of the na nation making process in the given country. Um, so uh, definitely religion and, and all the references to the Catholic religion and places of cult are significant in the Polish game. And in the Finnish game, it's more about territoriality and what, you know, what area should be considered Finland, which, which makes sense because that was the period in which Finland was being defined. So a quick summary, uh, both games uh, represent uh, dominant thematic game uh, genres of the era um, and can be identified with wider tendencies in the construction of the modern Finnish and Polish nations. Uh, they reflect on national mythologies. Um, I hope in the full paper we will get into the details of that because it's, a, it's really a lot of uh, small things that you cannot address um, and nuances you cannot address in, in a short presentation. So the similarities are not surprisingly 
uh, focus on ethno-nationality, uh, given it was 19th century. Uh, it is uh, understandable. And then the dissimilarities um, is the, the role of cartography in nation building um, that was actually um, researched before uh, in the context of, of Finnish history of that era. And uh, regarding Poland, uh, again, recurring themes that were um, identified by other researchers uh, looking at other media. So memory of political independence, uh, the nation's military heritage, and the myth of Poland's intrinsic Catholicity. So games fit in into um, narratives of, of patriotism and what it means to be Polish, what it means to be Finnish at, a, at, at that time, but maybe offer you know, a different look at the practices um, that were actually part of the everyday life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Interesting presentations.